Hi everybody, this is Bogus Reviews, and today I'm going to be doing another Throwback Thursday review. So today's Throwback Thursday review is going to be on the McFarlane Toys Clive Barker's The Infernal Parade Mary Slaughter figure. So before we take a look at the Spike Swallower, let's go ahead and take a look at the short story that she comes packed in with. So there is the first part. I'm going to go ahead and let you pause that right now if you want to read it. I'm going to do it in three parts here so you can read each section. There is the second part. And then there is the third part. So now let's go ahead and take a look at Mary. So Mary comes with this contraption that suspends her in the air. And it is sculpted really nicely. You get some really intricate detailing on the gold part up here. We'll have to lean this back just a little bit to get it into full frame right there. You can see the top of it is sculpted really nicely. You get a red pattern on it. That looks very nice. The She has these hooks that go through her shoulders right there. And these aren't the ones that were originally on it, because when I opened the figure, she was actually missing the two plastic uh, rings that go through her shoulders right there. If you look back at my community post, you can actually see that in the back of the package that she's missing those two rings that she's supposed to come with. What are the chances that I actually get a figure that's missing the two integral pieces that actually keep her suspended on this device? Luckily, I was able to find these hoop earrings, and I think they look really good. They actually look like they go to the figure. If you didn't know any better, it would actually look like these go to the figure. I do know that the original rings are incredibly fragile. Uh, they're plastic and they have a little separation uh, where you pull it apart and put it through the skin on her shoulders and up through the device. And a lot of people break that. So yeah, if you can, find some cheap hoop earrings at like Walmart or Target, and these will work perfectly. Like I said, I really like the way these look. The original rings were done in plastic, and of course these ones are metal. And that looks so much better, actually. So yeah, if you don't have yours or you just broke yours, that's a nice alternative for that. So taking a look at this head sculpt, McFarlane Toys did a really awesome job on it. The way she's closing her eyes as she's swallowing the sword there looks really good. Uh, the sword is actually glued down in her mouth. It's made of a very fragile plastic. She actually does have articulation here at the bicep, but I really wouldn't move it. Because whenever you move it, you will move the sword right here. So, like that. So if you move it back and forth, you will move the sword too, so I wouldn't recommend doing that. But the hair is sculpted really nicely. You can see the way it's dangling since she does have her neck leaned back like that. That looks very nice. Where her skin is stretching off of her shoulders, where the rings go through, you can actually see that they sculpted her muscles. You can see where the muscles underneath the skin are showing. It's painted in pink, and it looks like it has a little bit of a red wash over top of it. A dark red wash, I should say. So that's really nice. That's a very small attention to detail in there, but it's painted and sculpted really nicely. Her collar is sculpted on really nicely. It's done in nice bright gold and has a red pattern over top of it. She doesn't have much in the way of clothing, so there's not a whole lot sculpted on there, but it still looks very nice. She has scarification up here on her chest as well as down here by the bikini. The tattoos are painted on very nicely. Very intricate patterns to it that's painted on really well. She also has three metal rods that pierce into her sides here. And these were a little bit tricky to get in because you have to put them through these pillars and then into her. But once you get them in, it looks good and it, it feels like she's going to stay on there. It doesn't feel like she's going to fall off or that these are going to break. If you try to move the figure, they might break. But I feel like they're pretty sturdy. She has this kind of dagger that's uh, binding both of her ankles together. Yeah, no articulation there or anything. I don't think. No, that's just one solid piece. Here is what she looks like in the back. As I said, not a whole lot of sculpt detail on since she really doesn't have any clothing on. Uh, she does have these bands on her legs that are painted in a nice gold collar, but that's really it. Her wagon is also sculpted really nicely. You get some nice sculpt detail to the pillars that hold her up there, as well as some very, very nice intricately sculpted wood grain on the little wagon right here. That looks really nice. It's actually kind of realistic looking. Uh, you do get this little hitch right here because you can hook all of the figures up to each other. I think Tom Requiem is the first one. He's the leader of these little wagons. But yeah, you can actually connect all of them together once you get all of them. That is my goal eventually. You can see that Mary Slaughter's name is right here on the front and back. Right here. You can see that it says the Spike Swallower. She actually has real wheels that move. I thought that was very cool. These were incredibly, incredibly tough to get on here, though. You can see that the little axle right here is a very thin metal rod. And this is like a really firm plastic. I did try to boil this, and it didn't soften the material up any. 
and it was really tough to get these in. You can see that I did warp the spike on this one just a little bit from trying to get it in. Once it's in there, it will snap into place, and it will definitely stay in, but getting it in was a bit of a nightmare. But it does look great, and it does function once you actually get them in. You can see that the bottom is also sculpted really intricately. McFarlane Toys honestly didn't even have to add any sculpt to the bottom of this, but they did. And you get that nice sculpted wood grain. So now let's go ahead and go over her articulation. So the only articulation that she has is a swivel bicep here on the left side that really doesn't move because of the way that she's holding the sword. And this right one moves, but the pillar's blocking it. So once you actually get her into this, you really won't be moving it. So this is really more of an articulated statue, kind of standard for McFarlane toys at the time. But you really don't need any articulation for this. I think it looks great as is without needing any articulation. So now, let's do some size comparisons. So first up here she is next to the Tortured Souls Talisac figure, another figure that's suspended in the air. I don't have any other Infernal Parade figures so far, but I did feel like I'd do some size comparisons to some other Clive Barker figures that McFarlane did. And finally, here she is next to Lucidic. So overall, I would highly recommend picking this up if you can find one, because McFarlane Toys did an incredible job on this. It is sculpted really nicely. I will acknowledge that this is not going to be everyone's cup of tea, uh, just because of the way she looks and uh, the nature of the figure. But if you're into Clive Barker and his works and Hellraiser and stuff like that, then you'll know what to expect in this figure. Uh, figure, I use that term loosely, is definitely for you. As I said, this isn't really a figure because she only has two points of articulation, but it looks great regardless. So if you're into that, then definitely pick this up. So that's my review. If you like this review, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.